Thank you. Anyway, I do have some uh, legislative information to give you, even though the session is concluded. There are still processes in, in place. And I am uh, working on a bill that does have an effect on the senior citizens, and that is the real estate tax. And I'm, I am not going to let go of this issue. It is too important. There is no excuse for our senior citizens having to worry about how they're going to pay the rent to the government that's due every year. You work so hard to finally get your house paid off. Now, <clears throat> my bill is not actually a bill in the technical jargon. It is a resolution to put the question to the voters. And unless the voters vote to have real reform, we're simply not going to have anything but lip service. I mean, it's nice to talk about all the technicalities, and we can do these minuscule improvements, but it's going to take a vote of the people because it's in the Constitution of the state of Missouri how we tax ourselves when it pertains to real estate taxes. Legislators can change the state statutes, but we have no power to change the Constitution. Now, I have a bill that I filed it was uh, HJR 79, and in fact, if you'd like more details, I'm going to be discussing this issue more in depth in my capital report that goes out on next Thursday, a week from tomorrow. And I know some of you have signed up for it. It's my vehicle of information. I know that it's very frustrating getting information of what is happening on a state level. The local papers have local news. We get plenty of federal news. There is a big dearth of information on what actually we're doing in Jefferson City. And what we are doing in the state legislature has a bigger effect on your lives than many other levels of government. So anyway, um, it's, um, that's something we're addressing. A uh, common question that I get is, will, will it only pertain to senior citizens? And the right and only fair way to do it is to do it so that everybody can afford to stay in their homes because there are people in all age brackets who are experiencing difficulties, people who are not seniors yet, but they're paying for college or for shoes for their kids or um, young couples starting off. The problem is these tax increases have gone up 20, 30, even 40 percent in one year. And I think it's to the point where we can't tolerate having these increases. I mean, you worked all your life, you finally get your mortgage paid off, and then you have this. So that's what we're trying to get, some reasonableness. Most senior citizens don't ask me to be put on welfare. They like paying their bills. They just want bills that are reflective of what is fair and proper and proportionate. A lot of people are worried right now because we're seeing the reassessments, the, the home values are depreciating, and people are asking me when my assessor tells me the value of my house has decreased, does that mean my tax bill is going to decrease? And sadly, the answer is no. And you better hear it now because to most people, it doesn't make sense. Well, if my value of my property goes down, my taxes should go down. It doesn't work that way. All your assessment is is a calculation of what piece of the pie you pay for. But as long as the pie is getting larger every year, even if the percent of the piece goes down, the actual dollar amount could still go up. And it's better for me to tell you about it now than to wait till everybody gets their bills in November and has a fit. Yeah. So. Um, that's something that I'm relentless on. I'm thrilled to get to see you. I appreciate you inviting me today. You are my favorite group of people. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. Well, we're certainly glad you came, and we're glad to hear what you're telling us, although I was one that thought my taxes might go down next year since my Sad. house value is And less. I hate to be the one to bear the right. bad news. But you know what? Honesty is important, too. Right. The sooner you know what to expect, the easier it is going to be on all of us, because this has created a budgetary nightmare for families who are looking at, you know, when I bought my place 13 years ago, the taxes were one-tenth of what they are now. And we're at a point where it's just oppressive. And I don't want anybody having to leave O'Fallon because it's just too much. 
And yet people are. When I've been going door to door, people are, I see for sale signs some in many areas and I'm like, what, what's this all about? And the answer is, well, we're leaving because it's cheaper in Warrington or cheaper somewhere else. Now, here's where we're getting the shice. When I tried to bring this up among my colleagues last session in Jefferson City, a lot of them had this glazed over look, a non-connect, I don't get why this is a deal. And that frustrated me. I'm like, excuse me, guys, this is serious. My people aren't going to take this anymore. And I figured out that the rural parts of Missouri really don't see this as a problem. And it's because there's a lot more philosophy that goes into assessing your property value than actual accounting methods. And you either want to have it be the lowest possible or you want it to be the highest possible. And within there, there is a, a very soft marshmallowy cushion. So the rural areas are taxing to the minimum possible. And St. Louis and St. Charles County are taxing to the maximum possible. And there's a very good explanation for why that's happening. It's because the rural areas figured out if they tax to a much lower level, they can get more state funding for their schools. And consequently, the public schools in rural areas are getting four and five times the number per pupil of dollars allocated. Now, it's legal, but it's a clever trick. And I got to hand it to them. It's kind of like watching a football game. Sometimes you watch something and you're like, well, the other team got a touchdown and I was, that's the wrong team and that was bad, but you have to sit, sit back and that acknowledge that was good athletic skill. That, that was good sportsmanship. And what the rural counties are doing to us is creating a problem because when I say, hey guys, we need to fix this real estate tax mess and we need to do it now, they really don't, un they honestly don't understand. And so it's my job to try and educate them. I know if we can get this on the ballot, it will pass because the voters are fed up. We're just, I mean, it's too much. And we all want to support our local community, but we also, also want what's fair. There's a sense we all have of that, of what is fair and reasonable. So um, it's just critical that we push and keep pushing and this has got to be fixed because it's just gotten to be too much. So, thank you. You let us know if, if we can help any way when, when it comes due. You we, know, we'll, if I don't we'll get this thing passed next session, we're going to have to go to the, do an initiative petition. And I don't mind. You might see Cynthia Davis standing out front of Walmart. Or, well, or, we have a, a committee here. There. We're we'll all seniors. So we can do let it. Let us know. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Thank Appreciate you for coming.